Plot Summary of Benito Serino by Herman Melville Herman Melville's 1855 novella Benito Serino is based on a true story. It's about an American captain named Amasa Delano, who finds a ship that he thinks is in trouble but is actually a slave ship where a slave revolt has happened. Amasa Delano is a ship captain from Massachusetts who is naive and hopeful. When he ties down his trading ship, The Bachelor's Delight, in the harbor of the island of Santa Maria, which is close to Chile, he sees a strange ship show up right away. He sees that the ship has no flag, is in bad shape, and seems to be in danger. He decides to go help and brings food for what he thinks is a troubled crew. Once Delino gets on the ship, the San Dominic, he finds out that it is a Spanish slave ship run by a strange captain named Don Benito Serino. Everyone on board, including the slaves and the sailors, is upset and in terrible shape. Delano finds out that the ship went through an outbreak of scurvy, a terrible storm, and a long period of calm, all of which killed a lot of sailors and slaves and left the black slaves in charge of the ship more than the white crew members. Delano also finds out that Benito Serino is affected by these scary events in a way that is unusual. The Spanish captain's behavior is all over the place. He says rude things, coughs a lot, and can't stand up at times. He is always with Babwa, his loyal slave, who is always there to help Serino. Over time, Delano gets more and more annoyed by how close Serino and Babwa are to each other. He thinks that when they talk together, they sound like they are up to something. Serino asks Delano strange questions about his ship, and sometimes he seems to forget what Delano said about the San Dominic's journey. In addition to the upset captain, Delano sees other strange things happening on the ship, where disobedience and chaos seem to be the norm. Some groups of slaves, like the oakum pickers and hatchet polishers, help keep the ship in order in a weak way, but Delano finds them creepy and strange. On a couple of occasions, the slaves hit the Spanish sailors in a way that Delano thinks should get them punished right away. But Serino does nothing about it because he is weak and doesn't care. Delano also notices that some Spanish sailors are staring at him very hard, as if they are trying to tell him something. But when the black slaves join these conversations, the sailors become shy and quiet. Delano sees a sailor make a complicated knot out of many smaller knots at one point. When Delano asks the man what the knot is for, the sailor throws it at him and tells him to cut it in broken English. Delano can't figure out what's going on. Then, a slave comes and takes the knot from Delano and throws it into the water. Delano is confused by these events, so he tries to figure out why they happened. He thinks about different ideas. He wonders if Serino is crazy or if he is a fake trying to kill him, or even if he is a person who is working with the black slaves to kill him. But every time Delano looks into one of these ideas, he comes to the conclusion that it's nonsense, that he's annoying his host, and that everything is probably fine. Delano cares a lot about being polite and having good manners, so he decides to keep a noble, generous attitude even though he feels bad about himself. He can tell there is trouble on the ship. Delano's belief that the racial hierarchy is natural and can't be changed is a big part of why he thinks everything must be fine on the San Dominic. In Benito Serino, Delano shows how racist he is. He thinks that white people are better than black people and that black people are meant to be their slaves. During a tense shaving scene, Babwa cuts Serino's cheek while shaving him. Later, Babwa shows Delano a wound that Serino seems to have given him as payback, which shocks Delano. Even though he decides that Serino must be a cruel slave owner, he never realizes that slavery is inherently violent because it dehumanizes slaves and makes them vulnerable to their master's whims. Delano thinks that Serino and Babwa's relationship is more like an intense friendship with both love and fights. When Delano's boat finally shows up with food, he asks Benito Serino, who is always sad, to go with him to the bachelor's delight, where he can get better physically and mentally. Even though Serino says no, at the last minute he jumps into Delano's boat. Delano still thinks that Serino is a suspicious person, so he thinks that Serino is making up that he was kidnapped. Delano finally realizes the truth when Babwa jumps into the boat with a dagger pointed at Serino. 
It is not Serino who wants to kill someone, but Babwa. When Delano looks up at the angry slaves on the San Dominic, he realizes that there has been a slave revolt on the ship and that the black slaves, not the Spanish sailors, have been in charge the whole time he has been there. In the next few hours, Delano's crew manages to get the slaves under control and take back the San Dominic. The narrator then reads parts of Benito Serino's testimony at the trial against the rebellious slaves that took place in Lima. Serino says that Babwa was in charge of the slave revolt. Achafal, a powerful black slave who pretended to be in chains, helped him. Babwa is not the kind of passive slave that confirmed Delano's racist ideas about black people. Instead, he is a very smart leader who can be very cruel. Babwa and Achafal told the Spanish sailors to stay alive and be thrown overboard to be eaten by sharks. Babwa also told slave owner Alexandro Aranda, who was Serino's best friend, to be killed and have his skeleton used as the ship's figurehead. Babwa used this dead body to show the Spanish sailors that if they tried to rebel, they would follow their leader, which means they would die. The storyteller then jumps back in time to a conversation that Delano and Serino had on the way to Lima after the San Dominic was taken back. When Delano sees that Serino is still sad and down, he tries to cheer him up by telling him that he is now safe. Serino, on the other hand, cares less about his own safety and more about moral issues. Traumatized by what he has seen and heard, Serino realizes that slavery makes slaves angry and hopeless, which makes them capable of horrible acts of violence against their owners. This thought keeps Serino from sleeping. His focus on the past shows that people can only be fully human and moral when they face the horrors and wrongs of the past. After the trial, Babwa and the other slaves are given the death penalty. Babwa hasn't talked since he was taken prisoner. The head of Babwa is on display in a public square. Serino dies three months later, still affected by what he saw and did on the San Dominic. In a way, he is following his leader to the grave. Who this leader is, whether Babwa or Aranda, is up to the reader to decide. About the author. Herman Melville developed an early interest in literature and writing but spent much of his youth working to support his family, who lived in poverty after the death of Melville's father. In the 1840s, Melville worked on merchant and whaling ships in the Pacific Ocean. Through these travels, Melville became sensitive to the plight of indigenous people oppressed by colonialism. His adventures during these journeys, including Melville's capture by a group of cannibalistic people and his participation in a mutiny, served as the foundation for his first novels Taipei, 1846, and Omu, 1847. These unconventional works elicited both scandal and admiration, subsequently allowing Melville to devote himself to writing. In his following works, Melville developed a deep interest in moral issues, such as racial injustice and the human capacity for violence. In a covert manner, he explored such issues in his masterpiece Moby Dick, or, The Whale in 1851. Although Moby Dick is undoubtedly Melville's most famous work today, at the time of its publication it attracted little interest. Over the next few years, Melville became increasingly reclusive and published pessimistic short stories about human greed and hypocrisy, such as Bartleby the Scribner, 1853, and Benito Serino, 1855. In the 1860s, Melville turned toward poetry instead of fiction, but this did not bring him much literary recognition. Although Melville's fame soon vanished in his lifetime, leading him to die in near anonymity, he is now considered one of the greatest American writers in history. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.